let us discuss how symmetry is used to classify lattices into seven crystal systems and 14 Bravais lattices. We have seen that symmetry of a lattice can be classified into two types. Point group symmetry where we ignore translations and only consider point symmetries like rotations and reflections. Or we can consider a space group symmetry where translations is also included along with point group symmetry. So a space group symmetry is the complete symmetry of a lattice or a crystal. Now if we look at only the point group symmetry of a lattice then there are seven different kinds of point group which a lattice can have. These seven different point groups are called seven crystal systems. If we look at the space group symmetry, then there are 14 different types of symmetry possible and these are 14 Bravais lattices. You can see that these definitions are independent of the relationship between lattice parameter and that's the important point of this slide. So seven crystal systems are seven different point groups a lattice can have. Crystal system has is defined by a defining or a characteristic symmetry. So for example cubic crystal system is defined by four threefold axes. Once we have defined the crystal system on the basis of symmetry, then we can choose a conventional unit cell which is based on the relationship between lattice parameter. So for cubic, the conventional unit cell as we know is A equal B equal C and alpha equals to beta equals to gamma is equal to 90 degrees. So what is important here to note is that the conventional unit cell parameter relationship like A equal B equal C kind of relationship is not the defining property of the cubic crystal system. The defining property of the cubic crystal system is the four threefold axis. However, once we have the cubic crystal system, we can always choose a conventional unit cell satisfying these relationships like all le side lengths are equal and all interaxial angles are equal and equal to 90 degrees. One important point here mentioned just now is that the cubic symmetry is four threefold axes, not three fourfold axes. This is an important point to keep in mind because this also is a common mis misconception that cubic means three fourfold axes. There, there are cubic crystals which which will which can have four threefold axes but may not have three fourfold axes. Where are these four threefold axes? These are along the body diagonals of the cube. So if you look at a body diagonal of the cube, you can see the three faces and three edges meet at the corner from which the body diagonal is passing and a rotation of 120 degree about this axis permutes these faces and these edges. So if we look at the top face, front face and the right face meeting at the corner shown, then if I rotate about this red axis, these faces will permute with each other. So the top face will come to the front face, front goes to the right and right goes to the top and of course there are four body diagonals in a cubic unit cell so accordingly there are four different orientations of threefold axes in the cubic crystal. Similarly we define the other crystal systems so tetragonal is one which has only one fourfold axis. Orthorhombic is one in which there are three twofold axes hexagonal is defined by one six-fold axis 
rhombohedral by only one threefold. The adjective only is used to distinguish the rhombohedral from cubic. Cubic also has threefold, rhombohedral has also threefold, but rhombohedral will have only one threefold, whereas cubic will have four threefold axes. Similarly, monoclinic is one which has only one twofold axes. We can see that the tetragonal also has twofold, but it will have three mutually orthogonal twofold axes. So all these crystal systems are defined on the basis of these characteristic symmetry. Once the symmetry establishes the crystal system, we can then always choose out of many possible unit cells, a conventional unit cell satisfying these lattice parameter relationships. Now let us come to this question which we saw which we raised in one of the previous videos that cubic C is equal to tetragonal P. And that time we had simply seen it in terms of the lattice parameter. And then we saw that that was not the right way to look at. The right way to look at is through the symmetry. So if we start with a plain cubic, simple cubic lattice, then obviously it has four threefold axes as shown. But now if I center a pair of opposite faces to make it cubic C, cubic C means end centered cubic, means lattice points are at corners as well as at the pair of opposite faces. If this is the case, then you can see that as soon as we introduce these two additional lattice points, this threefold axis is destroyed. It cannot exist now with the centering of top and bottom faces because we said that this threefold axis, axis permutes the top face with the front face and the front face with the right face. But now top face and front face are not identical. One has a centering lattice point, another does not have. So thus this axis is no more a threefold axis. So this disappears, but if you now look at it carefully, the lattice does have a fourfold axis. And this is the only fourfold axis. So this is the lattice has one fourfold axis, so the crystal system is tetragonal. Previously we saw that we could select a tetragonal unit cell and this is the argument which we gave that since we selected a tetragonal unit cell which is a smaller unit cell that's why cubic C is tetragonal P. But that argument is not a correct argument. Now we are giving a better and correct argument that cubic C is not there because it doesn't have cubic symmetry. It doesn't have threefold axes. It only has one fourfold axis, so it is tetragonal. And if it is tetragonal, then there is no point in selecting the larger cubic unit cell. We can go for the smaller unit cell shown here, which is tetragonal P. So that's why n-centered cubic is simple tetragonal. But we also saw that only by going by the lattice parameter approach, the face-centered cubic lattice shown here, we can also identify in this face-centered cubic lattice a body-centered tetragonal unit cell. But we know that face-centered cubic exists. It cannot be replaced by body-centered tetragonal. Why? This cannot be answered on the basis of lattice parameters alone. So we have to look at the symmetry in this case. And when we look at the symmetry, notice that cubic C lost its cubicity, its cubic symmetry, because only one pair of faces were 
centered. In cubic F, we center all the faces. If we center all the three pairs of faces, then the threefold axis is not lost. So along the body diagonal, threefold axis remains, and that is true for all the four body diagonals. So face centered cubic has cubic symmetry. And since it has cubic symmetry, it's not acceptable, it's not nice, it's not correct to go and select a smaller body centered tetragonal unit cell in this and claim that it is body centered tetragonal. Symmetry dictates that it is cubic and we can select a cubic F unit cell. Now let's look at the Bravais lattices. We have seen that the cubic crystal class has three different Bravais lattices. Simple cubic, body centered cubic and face centered cubic. Cubic P, cubic I and cubic F. Now what is the difference between these? They have the same lattice parameters. They have the same symmetry as far as the rotational symmetry is concerned. All three of them have four threefold axes and that's why they qualify to be called cubic symmetry. But if you look at the translational, so they have the same point group symmetry. But if you look at the translational symmetry, then you find that the translational symmetry are different. How? You can see that in the cubic P, there is no translation from corner to the body center because the body center there is no lattice point. But from corner to body center is a lattice translation in cubic I. Again, this translation corner to cubic center is missing in the face centered cubic also. So, body centered cubic has translations distinct from, although it has rotations exactly the same as cubic P and cubic F, but it has translations which are distinct from cubic P and cubic F. So, its space group is different from cubic P and cubic F. Similarly, you can see that cubic F is different from either of the other two because there is a lattice translation from corner to the face center. This is not there in body centered cubic, this is not there in simple cubic. So this is again a distinct space group and that's why a distinct Bravais lattice. An interesting exercise for you. At a tetragonal unit cell, let us select a tetragonal unit cell with two opposite rectangular faces centered. So this will be an example of an end centered tetragonal. Again, we don't we know that end centered tetragonal is not there. Why not? So for tetragonal, we need a four-fold symmetry axis. Once we center a pair of opposite faces like this, a pair of rectangular faces, then the tetragonal symmetry is lost. The fourfold axis is no more a fourfold axis. It's become a twofold axis because of the presence of these two centering points. And of course, there are two more orthogonal two-fold axis. So there are three mutually orthogonal two-fold axes making it a orthorhombic system, an orthorhombic system. So the Brevet lattice in this case, since a pair of faces centered is end-centered orthorhombic. So although lattice parameter A equal B not equal C, if you only see by the relationship of the lattice parameter, and we have selected a unit cell in which A was equal to B and all the angles are 90 degree. So lattice parameter will be telling us or indicating that this should be a tetragonal unit cell. 
the tetragonal lattice. But since the symmetry of tetragonal is not there, four-fold axis is not there, we can't call it tetragonal, it will be orthorhombic. So when we say a not equal to, but for orthorhombic you may say that for orthorhombic we say that the unit cell is A not equal to B not equal to C. So we have to reinterpret correctly the not equal sign. Not equal sign only means not necessarily equal. Sometimes it can be equal and such equality are called accidental equality. So symmetry dictates this is also a good example that symmetry dictates the lattice type and not simply the unit cell size and shape. So let us summarize what we have done in this video. We saw crystal versus lattice. Crystal is translationally periodic arrangement of atoms. Lattice is translationally periodic arrangement of points. This we didn't do in this video, we had done it in one of the previous videos, but for from summary point of view, we are writing, writing it here. And then the basis of classification of lattice, a very, very important point is not unit cell shape, but symmetry. And we also saw an interesting result regarding cubic crystal system that the, for, that is a specific application of what we said in the previous slide that the unit cell shape does not dictate the crystal system but the symmetry. So in particular for cubic crystal system the unit cell shape uh, in defining the equality between A, B and C and alpha, beta and gamma is not the condition for cubicity. What is the condition for cubicity is cubic symmetry. And what is cubic symmetry? the existence of three four-fold axes, not, sorry, it's not three four-fold axes, but four three-fold axes. And seven crystal systems are seven point group of lattices, whereas 14 Brevet lattices are 14 space group of lattices.